Hey guys, and welcome to the premiere episode of our new channel, The Articulated Review. In this episode, it's gonna be a little unique in the fact that I typically only buy certain six scale figures, and I don't buy unlicensed and from manufacturers that I'm not familiar with. But I did both those things to get this figure because it's something I've always wanted, and I finally was able to get my hands on one. And obviously from the intro and from the screen behind me, you know what I'm talking about. It is AR Toys, six scale Hellboy or Hell Man figure, I should say. Um, I don't know. I really kind of like that logo. Like they've done the Hellboy logo like that. That would have looked really cool. I don't know if Hellman's Mayonnaise had that as their logo, I'd probably eat a lot more Hellman's Mayonnaise. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the figure. Um, just some bit of interesting backstory on Hellboy. Um, he was originally first uh, shown in 1993 in San Diego Comic-Con Comics number two. He is the creation of uh, comic book artist and writer Mike Mignola. Um, the first movie was done in 2004 and the subsequent sequel was in 2008, I believe. Those were directed and written by Guillermo del Toro. Mike Mignola didn't actually pin the scripts for those. Um, however, we are getting a reboot in the next couple of years, maybe the next year. Uh, David Harbour, who plays the sheriff in Stranger Things on Netflix, is actually going to reprise the role of Hellboy and replace Ron Perlman. And it's supposed to be a much more darker, grittier, uh, monster movie. Which if you actually read the Dark Horse comics, which after the San Diego Comic Con comic number two, Dark Horse picked up Hellboy and ran several miniseries with him. Uh, probably most notably, the most notable storylines is uh, uh, Sword of Storms and The Blood Queen, which uh, actually got animated movies uh, that came out after uh, Hellboy 2 and the Golden Army, which was the last live action movie. Um, but that being said, this uh, figure is based off of Ron Perlman's Hellboy uh, from the two Hellboy movies by Guillermo del Toro. Um, however, it is an unlicensed figure. Um, so anyway, I'm just as excited as y'all to see it. So we will get to unboxing it right now. So let's open the box and see what's inside. I'm not gonna get too hung up on the box art. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. It says like BPRD on the top of it, which of course stands for the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. Oh, and see this, this is what you wanna see. Nice foam. Foam means quality. And there we are. So it pretty amazing uh, what the accessories are that you get with the figure. Um, the figure itself is very impressive. I like the fact that um, the other, I have two other Hellboy figures and I'll show those in a second. I don't have the Hot Toys one, but I know that a big complaint with the Hot Toys one was that the material on the coat, which is like a vinyl outer covering and the vinyl outer covering on the pants would deteriorate and start to flake off and break down over time. Um, I like that with this, they went with like a, a cotton, almost kind of denim feeling material uh, for his duster coat. And the pants, they don't feel like pleather or vinyl. They feel almost like real, like I have a real leather jacket that feels just like this. So I don't know. That's just crazy. But anyway, so there's that. I'm gonna leave this stuff in here for right now. Then we'll go through a series of shots of all the different accessories you get. Um, this insert actually comes out with everything in it. And then behind there, you have this much more stuff. You get this nice little Hellman sticker. Eh, I don't, I'm not gonna do anything with that. But you have, you know, his cross and his little rosary beads, his belt. Big Baby, pouches, ammo for Big Baby. I believe this is the, his shirt, um, which I will say, I don't know in this video that I'm actually gonna take the time to display him on camera with the shirt on because I've heard, or I should have heard, I've read that this is a nightmare to get on this body, the way you have to put it on. Um, but anyway, so with that being said, we will go to going over all the accessories. Besides the hands that he comes with, you get two other sets of hands, a gun holding hand and the right hand of doom in a fist configuration. 
other than the museum pose head sculpt that's already on the figure out of the box, you also get kind of a menacing grim, you know, grin. You're supposed to also be able to take, there's a small cigar that is supposed to pinch in between the lips right there, his signature cigar. You get him as the Anung Unrama set up where he's actually got his horns. The only thing I don't like about this is the teeth. Um, they're just really sharply defined with black lines in between them. Looks like he's got a bit of gingivitis going on there. Also, just the teeth alone, just that how big they are. I don't remember his teeth being that big. That's almost like Gary Busey. Almost like, hey, want to talk about Amazon Fire TV? <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Um, and then you get this head sculpt, which I thought was really interesting. It's actually not Ron Perlman as Hellboy. It's actually a comic book style, which is, is kind of like what he looks somewhat in the um, animated movies, the two animated movies, Sword of Storms and The Blood Queen. Um, has this nice little scar right here. Again, the te I like the teeth on this one a little better. Um, they just seem to be a little cleaner, and there's less black line definition in between each tooth. So I don't know. Um, just a better look, but still. And then, of course, you know, on all three head sculpts, he's got the whole samurai, you know, top knot thing going on. Seems to me that uh, not so much on the comic book sculpt, but on this, I don't know, these horns where he's got them filed down, they just seem to kind of angle out weird, but I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know where they got the molds for these head sculpts from. I mean, AR Toys, this is an unlicensed figure. I don't know if this was something they did originally themselves or if this is from another, from maybe the Hot Toys figure from 2011. I'm not sure, because I don't know what all came with that figure. Um, I know that it was pretty lean on accessories, so I don't know that it came with all these different head sculpts. But anyway, you get all those. You get two weapons with him. You get uh, the normal size pistol. I forget if there was a name for this pistol specifically. It is supposed to actually break over and open. Um, the little bullets inside don't actually come out. They're permanently in there. Um, mine is really tight. There we go, okay. And so I'm a little hesitant to pull on it real hard. Um, but the actual tumbler for the bullets, uh, the barrel actually does I don't know, it does this little thing. It doesn't come all the way out. Or actually, yeah, it does. It doesn't catch on that little lip. But anyhow, so pretty interesting. That's all that really moves on it, that, the fact that it breaks over. It's got this nice little leather. And I, I don't know, this, it smells like real leather, this little string that comes off the back of it. I think in the movie he had something attached, like a charm or something attached to the end of it. It's got that nice little BPRD symbol right there, the hand holding the sword. Um, and then you get Big Baby. It actually has does have the detailing of having Big Baby, the little baby with the cigar painted on the sides. It actually does have the little, you know, Winchester rifle style cocking action to it. Um, this one also does break over as well and opens up. And you can actually take the baby bottle bullets and they will actually, it's a little snug. I'm not gonna push it all the way in there. It feels like maybe these need to be just barely filed down a little bit on the inside. The bullets are just a little too big. Like, uh, actually, it goes in there pretty well. But that's about as far as it goes in. I had to push really hard. I'm worried that if I push in there too hard, it'll actually get stuck. But a good bit of detail. Only complaint about the weapons is they look too clean. I do like that they actually have embossed on there, you know, BPRD. Uh, I just, I really wish these would have actually been weathered a little bit, but you know what, if you're really good at detail work and you can do some dry brushing with a little silver and gray and maybe a little dark blue even, could probably brush these and give them that weathered look to make them look a little more accurate and then maybe just go over the butt stock with a little bit of glazing uh, just to give it that shiny, worn look uh, like it's been handled a lot. Uh, but other than that, that's my only complaints about the weapons. They look great other than that. And this is everything else that you get. You get his belt. Uh, interesting thing about this belt is it actually has an actual real buckle with actual real little, I don't know what you call these, these little rods that actually punch through here. So it actually has a buckling belt buckle that actually 
buckles together so you can I guess you can get it as, as snug as you need to around his waist or keep it as loose as you want to you actually have to slide uh, like for example the gun holster another thing with this gun holster is I, I kind of got spoiled with one of my figures that has gun holsters that uses magnets here this uses like a little button that this fits over and it's on there pretty tight and I don't really want to pull very hard because I'm afraid I'll actually tear that or pull that little button out um, but all these look like they're made with real leather it smells like real leather I know that's weird for me to say that but it, it smells like real leather but you have to actually take and you'll notice these little slots in the back you have to slide all these onto the belt obviously you want to go with the gun holster first this part wraps around his leg comes up and hugs his thigh and then he's got his nice little gun holster here and then all these little pouches go on there as well this actually slides on too it's this nice little charm i think that's actually what you would put on first this clip right here i'm not entirely sure what this is for um, i know that this a lot of people that i've seen uh, had questions about what is this strap i think this goes on big baby there's two little rings at the top of big baby and then on the stock where i think this strap goes on and then maybe it's somehow supposed to hook to and hang I don't remember I don't remember I have to go back and look at shots from the movie and see but anyway uh, that's all those accessories that you get the nice little leather belt all those accessories uh, so kind of a little bit of a, a detailed pain to have to put together um, and of course then there's the shirt and it's actually pretty accurate it's actually got tears in it like he would have where he's taking some damage while wearing the shirt I believe in the second movie is where you kind of prominently see that um, but anyway, that's it for those accessories. And so this is the figure as a whole, pretty impressive. I like some of the detail like on his coat. He's got the little four leaf or a uh, little three leaf clover right there. He's got the BPRD symbol. The body, if I'm not mistaken, this body that they used, it does look good. It's actually got the lines. I'm not gonna go through the process of taking the whole coat off and everything because right now I don't really have a place to display him uh, safely inside a, a detail. So I'm not gonna put him all together uh, as of yet. Um, I may add some pictures. I think Damn Toy uh, did an unlicensed Hellboy figure maybe six years ago. Uh, I don't think they made very many and now Damn Toy's become a little bit more legitimate and so um, they can't really keep doing the unlicensed figure. This is, you know, it feels like almost like a Fison type body, uh, rubbery with like a plastic shell underneath with a a metal uh, subskeletal frame underneath there is definitely damn toy because it's got that little indention right there that the damn toy figure had as well so I think AR toys got the molds from damn toy for the body um, from pictures I've seen obviously the hot toys Hellboy figure um, which is ridiculously priced now if you can even find one that's in good condition still in the box they did probably a better body sculpt but overall, from what I've seen of pictures, the head sculpt on this one looks just as good as equal to Hot Toys. Um, and for the price point, which you can pick this up for, I picked mine up for $300 flat, shipping and everything um, directly uh, out of China. So um, well worth the money, considering that if you want to get the Hot Toys version, which is known to have some issues, the two main issues being that he's probably only about this tall compared to this Hellboy, which is a more accurate, because in real, if Hellboy was real, he'd be about six foot eleven. So this is a little bit more accurate height-wise uh, when scaled down to six scale than the Hot Toys and the Hot Toys version. The vinyl coating on the outside of the clothing deteriorates really easily. Um, pretty much, if you display it out of the box, it's going to deteriorate. But like I said, I'm I'm really high, I'm really excited to put him all together with all of his accessories and everything. And uh, the only other complaint I really have now that I've had him out of the box for a little bit, had time to look at him is. Oh, and then the tail, of course. The tail is actually a wire that you can just bend. I will say that his arms look stumpy. I don't know if that's just me, but that's not the perspective on the camera. His arms literally do look, they're very bulky and very, you know, it's a, it's a muscular body. They just look very, this arm, I guess really this arm, not so much, but this arm just seems really short. I don't know, maybe it's just because all the clothing and everything on him. If I had the coat off and everything, it wouldn't look so much like that. But um, I'll post some pictures at a later date with the coat off, maybe one with the shirt on, so you can kind of see that maybe that arm is, maybe it's not just me, maybe that arm is a little just short for the body. I don't know. But anyway, just to give a quick comparison, 
So this is AR Toys, six scale Hellboy, I'm trying to keep him standing up without using the support base. And this is the first Hellboy figure I ever got. This is Metsco from 2004 from San Diego Comic-Con. They only made 3,000 of these. I think this particular Hellboy, it looks more cartoonish, and I think that's because at the time, they were thinking because of the movie, there would, been a, there would have been a spinoff cartoon, and I think this was how he was gonna look in the cartoon. But um, <clears throat> I think even in 2004, the, the whole kind of hell and HP Lovecraft horror type thing with the cigar chomp and demon that hunts other demons wasn't really a show that Fox Kids was willing to pick up <laughs> and syndicate. So anyway, that's that one. And you see, this this has the vinyl coating on it, just like the Hot Toys figure would, but it's held up pretty well. I have kept it in the box more, so because it's really not a true six scale figure, but uh, I found this on the cheap and really liked it, decided I had to pick it up. Um, and pretty much everything you see with him right here is what he comes with. And then my oldest figure that I actually own, my first uh, six scale figure I picked up, was of course the Sideshow Collectibles Hellboy, which if any of you own these, you know that it's a box of disappointment because it looks nothing like this. When you open it up, it doesn't look anything like what's on the back of the box um, with the light reflecting. I'm not gonna go through the process of taking it out, but as you can see, it doesn't look anything like Ron Perlman. Um, he's got these giant Frankenstein Herman Munster boots um, to give him extra height. It had this god-awful design of a detachable tail that you had to tr try to cram in there. Um, I've never actually put the tail in him because it's it's just impossible without almost breaking it. But this was early on. This was back in 2004. Sideshow was new. This was relatively new uh, for them to be doing these six-scale licensed figures like this. And I, I don't know if you can see the face in there, but if you can see it in comparison to this head sculpt, I mean, this looks like a cross between Peter Boyle as Frankenstein and Mel Brooks's movie and, you know, um, uh, Herman Munster. It doesn't look anything like Ron Perlman. Um, I've s seen that some of the other, I think Sideshow released four different versions of, of this Hellboy figure, and some of the other ones, the head sculpt looks a little more uh, movie accurate. But anyway, so oldest to most recent. And there's about, uh, 2004, there's about 14 years of difference between this one to this one. So. Just thought that was a little interesting bit of information. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's my uh, review of the AR Toys Six Scale Hellboy or Hellman figure. Um, I do recommend picking it up if you uh, are into Hellboy or if you're just into Six Scale collecting and it's a, it's a figure that you've, you've been interested in. I do recommend that you pick it up. Um, that's it. So please uh, like and subscribe. Um, also, go visit the Patreon page and uh, subscribe there as well. I'll be doing. Um, I'll be doing special things on the Patreon page that I won't be doing just on the YouTube channel. So if you'd like to sign up for that, we'll be doing in the future some giveaways and some prizes and stuff like that for our uh, subscribed viewers. And uh, that's it. So until next time. Hey, want to talk about Amazon Fire TV? <laughs>